Hello, welcome back, or hi if you're new here. I'm Laura. I take you on adventures mostly in my home state of Oklahoma. I show you some of the best places to see, things to do, and yummy food to eat. If this sounds like content you are interested in, please like, comment, and share to help me grow my channel. I would be so grateful. Recently, I spent New Year's Eve in the town of Pawnee, Oklahoma. This was not my first time in Pawnee, but I was able to do more sightseeing this trip. Pawnee sits 30 minutes northeast of Stillwater at the junction of US 64, where it meets with State Highway 18. The town was named after the Pawnee Indian tribe that moved into the area between 1873 and 1875. My first stop was the Pawnee Bill Ranch and Museum. The 500-acre property is known as Blue Hawk Peak Ranch and was home to Wild West show entertainer Gordon W. Pawnee Bill Lilly. Lilly built his family their dream home and construction was completed in 1910. The 14-room mansion, which is obviously not a mansion compared to today's standards, is completely furnished with the Lilly's original belongings. I've heard the home is lovely inside. I walked around it and was able to take outside pictures of the home. This is my second time to come to the ranch and my second time not be able to go into the home. Many years ago, I was not able to go inside because I believe they were doing construction on the home at the time and it was closed to guests. This time I was visiting on New Year's Eve and the home closed earlier than normal operating hours due to the pending holiday. I was disappointed, but I figured third time is a charm, so I'll have to go back a third time to the ranch to see inside the mansion. So who was Pawnee Bill? Gordon W. Lilly was born on February 14, 1860 in Bloomington, Illinois, and would go on to teach public school on the Pawnee Reservation. Lilly was an avid hunter, trapper, scout, and interpreter for the Pawnee Indians in Kansas before coming to Oklahoma as a leader of the Boomer Movement during the opening of the unassigned lands in the area. A sensational showman, his Wild West show was hugely popular showcasing daring rescues, horse and marksmanship, including that of his wife, sharpshooter Mae Lilly. Annie Oakley joined his troop for the 1888 season. Lilly took his Wild West entourage all over Europe. In 1908, Pawnee Bill and Buffalo Bill William F. Cody combined their shows, and this arrangement lasted until 1913. I really enjoyed visiting the grounds both times I was on site. The first time I was delighted to watch a practice for Pawnee Bill's Wild West Days, which is an annual event that honors the legacy of Pawnee Bill, his wife May, and all the other performers that participated in his Wild West extravaganza. There's horse races, marksmanship, and the dancing eagles represent the Native American culture that was present in the Wild West shows. If you make plans to visit the ranch, this is the perfect time to go and have the opportunity to watch a spectacular show. I will link their website in my description box so you can keep watch for current dates of events. One of my favorite buildings to explore at the ranch is the barn built in 1926 that houses all the carriages, wagons, and stagecoach that were part of the Wild West show. They're amazing to see. There's even an old hearse, which I think is way cool. I love, love, love this building. There's a huge painted wood billboard that would have been utilized to advertise the show. There are several other buildings you can walk through while on the property. Take a look at a log cabin built in 1903. This is a great example of what life would have been like for pioneers and homesteaders. Take notice of the dirt floor and bathtub. It does make you thankful for modern conveniences. You can take a peek inside the original ranch blacksmith shop and all the equipment. This building would have been an integral part of keeping any ranch working properly. And I can imagine a 500 acre ranch and a Wild West show kept this building pretty busy.
The museum building contains display items and exhibits related to Pawnee Bill, the Wild West shows, and the local Pawnee tribe. On a side note, parts of the ranch are available to rent and would make a fun setting for private events. There are picnic areas on site and a fishing pond. Another highlight visiting the ranch is the drive through pasture that is home to longhorn cattle and a herd of bison. I adore bison. It's a one-way loop that you drive in and you stay in your vehicle to view the animals. I captured a cute series of pictures of a mom bison with her baby. I had my window down and was taking pictures of a big bison in front of me when the mom bison came up from behind my car very closely. Just a word of warning, be aware of your surroundings. I honestly wish the vehicle behind me would have honked to at least alert me, but it was all good. I was able to get some great pictures and it was worth the visit. Soon enough, it was time to leave the ranch and head to my next stop. I couldn't help but notice a large mural honoring Chester Gould, who was an American cartoonist best known for the creator of the Dick Tracy comic strip, which he wrote and drew from 1931 to 1977. He incorporated numerous colorful, monstrous villains. Gould was born November 20th, 1900 in Pawnee, territory of Oklahoma. It's a cool mural and you can't miss it while you're in town. My next location I was looking forward to seeing, the Pawnee Bathhouse at Pawnee Lake Recreation Area. I knew it was gonna be beautiful. I had noticed pictures of it online before. Built in 1939, the historic rock bathhouse was constructed from hand-cut native stone and stone steps and walls lead down to a swimming area below. I could tell this is a popular spot in the summer, but when I was there, it was eerily quiet, which I happen to love. There's a two acre swimming area with a sandy beach and picnic sites, along with a slide and diving board. The bathhouse is on the National Historic Register. It's a great place to visit, even just to photograph. When I was leaving the area, the Oklahoma sky showed off with a magnificent sunset to send me on my way. Oklahoma has some of the most beautiful sunsets anywhere. Stop number four was to eat at Click's Steakhouse. I had heard about this restaurant for years, so I was happy to finally get to experience it for myself. I selected chicken fried steak dinner, which included soup and salad bar. It was really good and it was huge. Literally, you can split it with a couple of people. Great choice, but the best part was the dessert. The Toll House pie was amazing. It's a combination of a warm, gooey Toll House chocolate chip cookie merged with a slice of pecan pie. I was urged to get it with vanilla ice cream, but I did not have room. I think that would have been an excellent addition to the pie. I did get a to-go order for my friend, a bacon burger and fries. I may have to try it next time because those hand-cut french fries looked phenomenal and my car smelled like them all the way back to Oklahoma City. I attended the town of Pawnee's New Year's Eve celebration. Wonderful celebration around the town square. There was a bonfire and families were having fantastic evening together. My friend was performing the live music at the Buffalo Theater. First of all, the place is splendid. I love historic buildings and I investigate the paranormal. As soon as I pulled up, my friend informed me that the place was haunted. Let's be real, it's one of the reasons why I went, because I had a hunch it was. 
When I entered the building, I couldn't help but notice the amber light that was flickering above the staircase. It was beautiful yellow on the walls. It was mesmerizing. I even pulled out my phone to do a little video to capture the glowing, and I ended up capturing a male's voice on the video. In paranormal investigating, it's called EVP, Electronic Voice Phenomenon, i.e. the spirit voices. It sounds like a gentleman saying, don't knock it down. I'll let you listen to the clip for yourself. I look forward to going back to the theater in the future. The entire evening was lovely. Great entertainment, a local gentleman provided hot chocolate and black eyed peas for the community to enjoy. At midnight, they had their own ball drop welcoming 2023 in the town square and fireworks exploded to ring in the new year. It was a great event put on by the Pawnee Chamber of Commerce. I look forward to going back to Pawnee sometime and hopefully I will finally be able to make it into tour Gordon Lilly's home. Pawnee makes for a fun day tour and is only about an hour and a half from Oklahoma City metro area. Easy drive on I-35 northbound to the Perry exit, then drive eastbound on Highway 64. You'll pass the town of Morrison and then straight into Pawnee. I hope you enjoyed this Pawnee adventure. Like and subscribe to my channel if you like day trip content. Until next time, I will see you later.